Oh my god. Guess who had McDonald's again? Moi. So, a few announcements. If you don't follow me on TikTok, follow me. We're gonna have an announcement there, Timmy. A Timmy. Team. Baby. Timmy. Uh, we got the Yakult stickers team. And it turned out amazing. As part of 30Q, 32Q, we usually have like very intimate questions and answers when it comes to our guests. You hurt any of my friends by asking them in these invasive questions into their stream when they're playing Valo or Apex and just ruining the whole vibe because, you know, trauma? You do that, I beat you up. Hello? Hello? Oh, thank God. Okay. Can you mm. tell the team about yourself, what type of dreams and what you like and blah, 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 blah. Hi, my name is Blue Bianca. Uh, my real name is Bianca. The hair is blue. And then for funs, I play a lot of, I say variety, but I mostly play FPS, so first person shooter. Because I'm must very be competitive. Nice. I don't I'm nice because half the time I want to uninstall <laughs> the other half I blame myself and I find myself questioning why no. I'm doing this but I love it I love it because mostly because the friend given the mm -hmm. choice of anyone in the world whom would you want as a dinner guest I don't know why and this is the I'm just speaking from like what my mind popped up. So the first person I thought of as soon as you said that was CL. So she's iconic to me because whoever was her, um, whoever was a stylist when she was in 21 and also when she went solo, inspiring. Like literally yes. my fashion has, is derived from 21. Um, and I'm not really big on K-pop. I used to back in like high school, but 21 and Big Bang were like the groups I was following. I would just be curious as to like picking her brain on like fashion and like how she's doing now and on like a mental state because she's definitely hel healthier and happier with where she's at now which is really fun i also recognize that like cl is definitely like a smart businesswoman. like she has oh. been able to navigate because she held down as a leader for 21 at the young young age of 18 i think right very she was super young and yeah. that was like the interesting part you went through a lot they all did mm -hmm. dara i think dara was the oldest at the time at yeah like 22 23 24 something like that but it was just so interesting how someone at her age was dubbed the leader on top of rapping on top of singing you know, doing certain things she's dancing. supposed to have a big career too but like now she does and it's really cool because you see her in like western american fashion shows too like people know her mm -hmm. her oh, fashion's every... always peaked too mm. so it's like oh, who yeah. she is I don't know. There's some people who just like they they get up, they move, and they like demand the presence around them. And the, and I feel they like they have CL. such an aura. Yeah, they have such an influential aura and like mm. presence in the in regards to how they hold. Also, kind of where I hope I bring the same kind of energy and attention oh. without having to say anything. Um, not in the way of like wanting the spotlight, but just in a way of people can see and sense who I am, and mm. they don't have to like go beyond that. I mean, I think. To me, attention to detail and like having a good presence is vital for like first impressions. So definitely like her, she was definitely influential in that sense for me, at least with fashion, so. Yeah. And I feel like when you recognize the significance of first impressions, whether it's career or uh, just like networking in general, like it's very, very important of like making sure mm -hmm. that people can take you seriously, but still like, this is mine. This is, this is me through the clothes. This is an expression. So do you consider Be yourself me. like a very like fashionable person? Or oh like... yeah. <laughs> you can tell a hero right now. Uh, but like yeah. all my t-shirts. I'll show him like some oh things that I'm like, look at these, look at these shoes. I got these shoes for a lot less than retail. Guess what retail is? Guess what the resale value? Like I I, I love I, that. I, mm. I but I also love the idea of making clothes. I don't have a sewing machine. I don't know how to yet, but I plan on to eventually. Is that like the one project you would want to do if you had unlimited amount of money? Oh, I would love to just make clothes for myself. Really? I could tell us what I'm making for anyone else. I want to make it for myself. No, but that's it. You know, why not? It. <laughs> so it seems like you want to like create clothes if you had unlimited resources and time. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Would you want your clothes to be famous or like, would you ever want to be famous? I, so, I mean, at a much younger age, I definitely, I definitely know I wanted fame, but for the wrong reasons, right? Mm. You wanted fame because it seemed glorious. It seemed very much up at top. It seemed really cool to be there, popularity and all that. That was back then. 
Uh, me now, I don't care for fame. What I do care for is loving and enjoying what I do for mm. myself. Mm -hmm. And being sh making sure that I'm financially okay to still have a fun life. Right. Because so. I want to enjoy my life, but I also want to have shelter. <laughs> yeah, I want you know? a roof. You know, that'd be I like great. my rice cooker. Mm. I like blankets and pillows and a bed. You know what I got as a spoiling thing for me? Um, mm -hmm. I'm in Canada, right? A heated mm -hmm. blanket. I Oof. love a heated blanket. Oof. I, girl, in Oof. the winters when it's cold here in New Jersey, New York, I need a blanket. I or you can just get a human. That. Oh. Blanket. <laughs> <laughs> and I also feel like when it comes to like being famous, at a young age, uh, there wasn't a lot of transparency. Now oh, I can no. feel like I can go on TikTok, I can like go Instagram, I can go so many platforms and like see what they do on a daily basis. There's like an OOTD, there's a vlog, this is what I did in a week, you know? Like it is invasive sometimes of like how it's, much people like told. It's weird. Right. Like, this, this this amount of this this much amount of exposure for someone at a young age mm. could either be really good or really de de detrimental. I can't think of words. Detrimental to like their psychosis and then like in the long term. Yeah, it's nice to have that kind of exposure, but at what cost? Mm. Like, what's gonna really do for your mentality and like your like self image? How would you think of yourself? We think of society. There's too much of it but there is a lot more transparency of the realness of things yeah on social media now but there still is a lot of like false news or false oh absolutely like they still and have to market themselves in one way or the other right and that's never gonna go away at this point mm. unfortunately so it's always so I interesting so yeah i wonder then because you're on twitch and as you see like as a result of such transparency and you know, you kind of become a uh, part of this person's community. And some people believe that like we're really close friends and that parasocial relationship that exists on Twitch and all these like social media platforms. Have you ever had a challenge of like parasocial relationships in Twitch or like on Discord, stuff like that? I feel like there is always going to be some sort of disconnect with parasocial relationships or mm. interpersonal relationships that you create but it also is who you are what you make and like also the type of people that interact with you on a daily basis right it's it's about awareness to a degree mm. but also there's experience that is involved whenever you're creating such interpersonal relationships mm. um like for me i can confidently say the people that i inter interact with on discord um, at least more than, you know, like once ever, they're definitely friends of mine. Like those are definitely friends. People in my chat, I call them friends because to a degree they are my friends because I do talk to them in between games. Mm -hmm. I scream, I'm cussing, I'm talking about <laughs> left and right. Like oh. I'm exposing <laughs> things about myself. I know, right? <laughs> I'm exposing things about myself that even like maybe my own family doesn't know. Oh, so they totally. are technically friends. Yeah. Um, but then you also have like your inner circle that that's something that you have to define. So if someone ever calls me their friend, but I don't find I don't find myself calling them a friend. Like you want to try to meet in the middle, see if their definitions mean the same. There's a lot of communication. It's mm -hmm. it can get it can get really ugly, or it could be a very healthy friendship that you end up making. So how do you put boundaries to like ensure that you are still you and you have your circle still and like someone who is like. We're best of friendos, right? Because I went to your one VOD that uh, you posted in 2012 and April 2nd at 2 p.m. With the wind degrees uh, going up four kilometers. <laughs> you know, like... <how> did... <laughs> so I, ha I personally haven't had a <laughs> creeper stalker friend moment as of yet. Um, but I think I also am... My personality is a bit daunting and very intimidating when people don't know me and mm, which is good I because i want that, that fear yeah. i want fear i want you to feel the fear when you you know try to be friends with me because then <laughs> um, I, love, I love i love yes. if a crystal ball could tell you the truth about yourself your life the future or anything else what would it be i think the question i would probably ask is am i happy with how i end up at the end of my life like that mm. would be my question it's not that i want to know what happens because i don't 
really i'm not i'm not what's the word i'm confident that whatever whatever choices i make from here on out are going to be solid mm. i'm very confident and comfortable with the idea of okay i'll still make mistakes growing up so as i get older but that's life what my main concern is is if i'm happy with mm. what i've done and that mm. would be a question i would definitely ask that because like that's that's, mm -hmm. that's that's a concern at least for me yeah do you feel like happiness is something difficult to obtain especially it's, with like the chronic illnesses and uh, past injuries for someone who's been through as much physical and mental pain as me i think happiness is kind of difficult to a degree but at the end of the day i like to focus on like the things that are that gives me somewhat content that gives me energy to enjoy like video games i enjoy the friends mm. that i make on the internet i enjoy my cats for sure i love i um, it's like the small things that give me mm. a lot of joy i bring that and i kind of exemplify on that i just like kind of like just multiply that um is it difficult there are days when it's more difficult than others there i mean that's just life. but no There's... one expects life to be perfect it's what you've just... made out of it that speaks more about your <sighs> character exactly and it sucks because i have such high expectations for myself yeah I am my worst enemy mm -hmm. i want so much for myself mm -hmm. but not in a selfish way just like you can do better you can do this like that's what the f <laughs> that's know. what i want for myself <laughs> maybe the cat is saying sometimes it's okay to have a leap of faith you know yes i am huge on taking leap of faiths mm -hmm. um i i've always been comfortable with always having a second a backup plan in general but I love, I love taking a leap of faith. I think I really, my leap of faith, I actually channel that in with uh, my my love life. I take oh, leap of faith in my love life. Yeah. My career, not really as much, but yeah. When we were speaking about leap of faith and you were talking about your love life, is like, was that the leap of faith? Or can you give, an, give us an example of like a leap of faith? Like what happened? What was at stakes? So not everyone knows, or some people know the story of how we met. We, but leap of faith, it's a combination of things. Um, I'll use my current relationship because it's so cringe and everyone sees it. Why not? Um, I, Be happy. I, I feel like, what the f But I don't, I don't like to show off my happiness in the, in like a very, what's the word, ostentatious way. Like I'm not trying to like rub it in. It is, it is what it is in my life, but I, I hope I don't rub it in in people's faces. So at least that's what I hope. Okay, so leave of faith. Meeting someone on the internet back wave when was super frowned upon because it was harder to have that communication online versus now, once you meet somebody, you can go on Discord, you do video calls, etc. Yeah. So I definitely will say with Hero, I met, I actually found him on Twitter. Yeah, a mutual friend commented on a selfie of his and his selfie, I thought, because I, I love giving compliments. Me and too. I don't, expect, I don't expect shit back. I just yeah. love telling people they look good or amazing or like, et cetera. Like I do that for even IRL. If I pass by a beautiful and I'm like, got a nice I will say it. Yeah. No. I will same. say it. Same. But to circle back to the original question, found him through a friend who commented on a selfie. So I went ahead and commented saying, uh, I was complimenting his skin, his smile, and that he was handsome. That was the compliment, right? Um, and then probably, I would say like probably a couple weeks later, he raided my Twitch because <gasps> I knew he was a gamer. And then I invited him to like the Valorant lobby. And so that was kind of it. We just started playing video games, <gasps> but we didn't get close until I try to remember. Oh. Uh, we, we, we were watching a lot of Marvel because I don't watch TV shows. Yeah. I actually reserve watching TV shows and animes because I want an excuse to watch it with somebody. Mm. So that's why I mm. don't do that. I love I'm that. Like, I, want, I want excuses. Mm. God, you, you, Mm. Days with either people or my friends one of the two that was a leap of faith because we before he moved into my apartment we were three thousand plus miles apart <gasps> oh yeah oh so... i thought he was just visiting sheesh holy <laughs> shit. He, he lives here now <laughs> damn okay wait so like how long have you guys known each other since valo because i remember we asked it and then we were like oh shit, well has it been like a year Mm -mm. No, this the first time I we the first time we played video games together was in December, so it was like <gasps> half a year ago. Oh my god, that is a and leap of faith. A, the leap of faith is also him moving in. Yeah, after just a month of being official together or something like <gasps> that. Yeah, I stress this to everyone that I meet. 
if you have the opportunity to move out anywhere randomly, do it. Yeah. I did it. I did this six years ago, seven years ago to New York, no <gasps> plans. And it was the best decision ever. I, no, I had nothing bad behavior. I want to say it's more like desperate, get the f out of my parents' house behavior. But yeah, bad works too. But like, <laughs> you stayed out of it. You know? Uh, yes. You didn't go yes. back. You were like, I'm going to do tooth and nail. I'm going to stay. I'm going to live by myself. F it. You know? And you committed to yourself and you did. It was a struggle for yeah. sure. Uh, pandemic, I definitely moved back during the pandemic just so I could <laughs> be with family to help them during like tougher times. And then I moved back out once I was good um but yeah that's why he moved in because getting out of your because we all love our family but yeah. there are times that we need to get out to yeah. understand and like really find ourselves mm -hmm. and i already volunteered to everyone that i meet um if they want to come visit me they i have a couch i i have a home like you guys can come here as long as you're not allergic to cats we're good and i gave that a, an option to him as well and so yeah it was it was available. this is before we were even talking yeah and way before but the talking and then the relationship to me the love life that's that's the uh, leap of faith because we technically didn't make it official until we actually met irl mm. and so the moment that we met irl it became official this might be tmi i need the physicality to be there too so that yes is also a major no but that's a huge faith. thing i don't know how can oh, yeah. how people can do long distance okay i did that for that's a month crazy. and i was like this is ah! <laughs> share us a problem that you want advice and so share with your partner a problem and then um me will respond on like try to give you an advice patience so i still Ooh. i still have a lot of um issues with having patience whether mm. it be driving whether it be waiting for people whether it be this motherfucker who can't cross the street fast enough for me to wait at them you know the stupid yeah yeah but yeah it's got it's gotten a lot better um my patience has gotten a lot better but how would you handle like what do you do whenever you feel like you're impatient but you have to be patient and whether this impatient is skewed with a negative emotion whether it be anger or sadness there's two types where i've like exercised and like had conflicts regarding it um the first one is when i am impatient to my friends because how come you don't get it so quickly right yeah i get that a lot too yeah um and as i broke that down i found out that that was something that was still a people pleasing people pleasing type of behavior because i wanted to change to see my side mm -hmm. and for them to feel the exact same emotions for me so i feel that i am being heard but sometimes emotions are not that logical when you are trying to see emotions in a logical space it's like fickle right yeah so when it comes to like understanding the people pleasing behaviors that some people don't owe you a reaction and that they don't owe you change just because you ask for it my challenge then was how to let go yeah that's a good one too because i can teach and i can preach how to let go and walk away from a situation or a friendship or something when you don't need to be there yeah right but it's so hard because you, not everything is going to be the same it's not textbook it's exactly situational there are too many variables and uh there's too many things to think about that will determine how mm. things factor mm. you know like the temperatures could be just too hot this day and i might be mad because it's just extra hot you know like things like that are silly um but yeah it, i i'm better my patience but that's still there's moments especially when i'm driving <laughs> when i'm driving and nobody can you nobody can <laughs> can drive that well but when it comes to like patience to others they the idea of letting go and that they are their own person they have their own personal lives that they have their own traumas and triggers that they may not be able to communicate that to you mm -hmm. that allowing them to at least confront is the best way for them to just model out the behavior. So whenever I feel impatient with a friend, I try to like let them go a little bit more longer. So sometimes I don't talk to them for a couple weeks and I'm like, okay, let's let's just refresh. Let's try to like give ourselves time. Because if you keep trying to prod, it in like it, it infects it the worse. wound yes. more than it actually heals it, right? Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. So one way I can do is like give it time, start to understand that the reality is sometimes they may not be able to just learn from it. And it's so it's frustrating. Hard. You have to understand that like in your as you adopted it in your own life, everyone will go at different pace. You trying to push that onto others is because you wanted to learn faster. Mm -hmm. but they may not be in that position um before i let you go i always do mm -hmm. this thing so so think of this as a time capsule i will say it's a time capsule i <laughs> bet i mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. and so could you look into the camera. the camera yeah and what is something you want to tell your future self i hope you're making more money but also <laughs> i hope heroes still <laughs> i'm just kidding oh i hope God. that your career progression is there still um, most likely by this time of the year, you will be living in a different city and state. So hopefully you're doing good. Um, I, I have full confidence that your mental health is good. Full confidence of that. I also have full confidence that the cats will still be fat and chunky. So I'm hoping that your career progresses. I'm hoping you're doing something that you love. Or at least figuring that out. Um, and uh, drink water. Yeah, thirsty bitch. Because I am really bad at that, so better at that that's beautiful oh my god thank you so much for being a part of my little podcast and for accepting the offer thank you for the thank you for the invite thank you for Absolutely. showing me your beautiful shirt and i changed to match you oh, look cute i uh, no. i can't wait for a head in the clouds we're gonna have so much fun i'm, I'm so excited i'm so excited